This is the central London HubSpot user group, the London Hub. We are one of the world's largest HubSpot user groups. Um, we had 300 to 400 attendees turning up at our London events uh, pre-COVID. And we're obviously looking forward to going back to meeting people face to face. One of the advantages, obviously, of, of the virtual hugs is that we can expand the, the audience and bring people in from around the world. But as you all know, we'd love to meet uh, in person um, and welcome you back to, to the central London venues where we have some fantastic guest speakers. Uh, if you didn't see the, the slide before, we have some, some swag. There should be a link there for you to, um, to, to get some free stuff from HubSpot, and we thank them for that. Um, and I, hopefully you've, you've put your cartoon characters. Um, who's my favorite cartoon character? It's probably Snoopy which is a bit sad and probably um, dates me quite quite accurately. Uh, okay, let's let's move rapidly on. Agenda. Cluid Probit, this, that's who I am. I'm the CEO of White Hat. We're an inbound marketing agency. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that. There's some house, housekeeping before we move on to the actual social media presentation by Crystal. And we've got some Q&A at the end. So let me... Um, flip into who we are. So White Hat is an inbound marketing agency, hopefully because you're all uh, either HubSpot users or, or using the free version of HubSpot, you're aware of who HubSpot is. Um, you might not be aware of the agency network that surrounds HubSpot. Uh, around 50% or so, slightly under that, of implementations uh, are done with the help of an agency and they're phenomenally successful, uh, which is why HubSpot has built the agency community uh, up to uh, and support them so well. Ourselves, uh, we're based in London, based in the UK. We're a B2B marketing agency predominantly with business to business clients. We do have some uh, B2C clients. We have some educational clients. We have charities, but really our, our, our sweet spot is in the B2B space. Uh, we specialize in SEO. I think we are the only HubSpot agency that really focuses uh, and goes OTT on, on, on search engine optimization and driving the right type of traffic to HubSpot uh, sites. Because at the end of the day, unless you can get visitors to those sites, you can't take advantage of all of the, all of the useful tools that come afterwards in terms of conversion rate optimization, uh, lead nurturing, and everything else. We have a fantastic growing team. Uh, many of who are on the call today, based in, in, in central London. Bonkers and great fun, this is very, very true. Uh, but we also have a distributed team. So we have, uh, we have people in Ireland, in Germany, uh, and a large um, uh, delivery team based out in Argentina. We partner with a, a fantastic agency called DigiFiance, who won recently the HubSpot Award for Customer Service. Out of the 6,000 agencies worldwide, they, they came number one. So if you actually want HubSpot uh, implemented right, and if you need help, then we have exclusive rights to that team uh, based, in the U, uh, based in any kind of work that comes out of the UK. So talk to us about that. We are HubSpot certified on virtually every single certification that HubSpot produces, and we're a platinum level partner. We've been around for for six years in the HubSpot ecosystem, slightly more now, uh, and we've been doing SEO for over 10, probably closer to 15 years now, which uh, is, is, is really uh, something spectacular. In terms of, of the services that we provide, one of the things that we do for the HubSpot community and, and, the, S, uh, and, and the Hub group in particular is that we provide now, uh, you might have heard of sort of SEO audits and HubSpot audits well, so, where someone will plug your URL into a, uh, into a piece of uh, online software, run a report and, and send it over to you and say that's an audit. That, that's not what we mean by an audit. We, we actually uh, take the time. We use one of our uh, top team members. We spend uh, many hours analyzing your site using multiple different tools, but more importantly, our own skill set um, to look at what has been done, both technically um, and externally uh, on the site uh, from an SEO perspective and also from a HubSpot perspective. We can look at best practice. We can come 
back to you with tips and advice for some really quick wins. And we do that without cost. We do that without cost to the HubSpot user group, to, so to this group here. And if you're interested in, in that, then touch. You should have all uh, my contact details or our contact details, and we will run that audit for you. It's like I said, it's not a push button thing. Um, it takes us a week to turn it around for you, but it is incredibly valuable. On top of that, we obviously run inbound marketing campaigns and we build the most amazing websites. So those, those are the, the, the focus as, as, a, uh, as a company. And so let's say our clients, the B2B technology biotech, SaaS based businesses, typically out of, the, uh, out of the UK, but we have international clients as well. Um, and we're really focused on digital transformation. Uh, many companies sign up for HubSpot, they can't really, uh, or they don't feel that they're getting the, the most out of that investment. Uh, they don't really know what they don't know. And that's why working, working with a partner is such a, a fantastic experience. So that's really all I wanted to say about White Hat. Um, what's a hug? Uh, you should have um, already picked up uh, what, what a hug is. It's a HubSpot user group, 150 plus groups worldwide in 35 countries. HubSpot is growing like a weed at the moment and they're doing incredibly well. And the HubSpot community, the hugs, are one way of sharing that knowledge the purpose of a hub, a hug, uh, is not to promote White Hat or any of the other agencies that are involved, but really to help and educate and inspire the HubSpot community. So we uh, genuinely teach, we share, uh, and we try and uh, enable others to grow. And as I said before, the Central London Hug is, is one of the largest in the world. In terms of some admin, uh, please use the chat panel on uh, on the side of your screen for saying hello, uh, for any Q&As, uh, Q&As for specific questions, I beg your pardon, um, and direct messaging section if you want to talk to another, uh, to a member here. You should be on mute, but if you're not, please mute yourself. Um, use this opportunity to, to network and make friends. Um, I'm gonna um, flip back to the, to the um, first screen now and see if I can bring through Crystal uh, and find out if, if she is here. Like I said, if not, all is not lost. Um, what we will do, we will uh, record the presentation and everybody who is here will get a recording of that and we'll get back to you. So if you bear with me for just one minute, I'm gonna put myself on, on mute, on pause, and we'll do some, some techie admin, so hold on. Hi, this is Crystal King, and I'm the social media professor for HubSpot Academy. And some of you may have tried to attend the London Hug this morning, and I wasn't there. Had a little bit of a glitch with the time zones. I'm in Boston, Massachusetts, and uh, didn't realize it was quite so early in my morning. So my sincere apologies. But I'd love to still tell you all about what I think is happening in social media in 2021 and talk to you a little bit about the social media tools in um, the HubSpot um, platform. So I'm going to get going. I'm going to sh um, share my screen and show you the hug. Okay. Um, show you the hug presentation that I have. Okay. Let me present. Okay. All right. Let's talk about HubSpot and social media in 2021. Um, and of course, I won't be able to take questions at the end of this because this is a recording, um, but there are there is some contact information for me at the end, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that people may have. So as I mentioned, I'm the HubSpot Academy social media professor. I previously um, worked for organizations like Pegasystems. I managed global social media at Keurig. I was at CA Technologies and um, Sybase, which is now part of SAP. So I've done B2B and B2C social media. Um, and I'm also a novelist on the side. Uh, my books are Feast of Sorrow and The Chef's Secret. And they're about um, chefs um, in culinary Italian history, um, but novels. So um, a little side fun for you. And in this session, we're going to cover what's going on in social media in 2021, how you manage and monitor your account in HubSpot, how you can do social publishing and how you can report on your success. 
Okay, so if you're not familiar with HubSpot Academy, we um, offer free online in training for inbound marketing, sales, and customer service professionals. Um, we have all sorts of certifications. We have topic courses. For example, um, my courses are on Twitter. Um, there's a LinkedIn lesson coming out at the um, in June. Um, but there's short lessons for professionals. Um, if you're looking to really grow your career or change your career and or, or really enhance the things that your business is doing, HubSpot Academy is a great place to start. And um, our motto is um, that, and our purpose is to educate and inspire so that we together transform the way the world does business. And so that's hopefully what our courses do for you. Um, and let's talk about how you can think about social media and your inbound strategy. So first of all, we all know that the pandemic has changed our world uh, completely. Um, and it certainly made its impact in social media. Social media numbers jumped by more than 13% over the past year with nearly half a billion new users taking the global total to 4.2 billion by the start of 2021. That's pretty remarkable. I mean, social media numbers were growing anyway, but suddenly you have everybody indoors and they don't have a lot to do. And they realize, oh, the best way for me to connect with other people is through social media. Um, it's also changed the way that we buy. And um, right now, um, in particular, in the UK, one in four online purchases are made via an interaction with a social media platform. We're seeing the same types of numbers um, in other um, countries as well, particularly in the US. 70% um, of internet users aged 55 to 64 purchased something online in the last month. Um, and 60% of Gen Zers in the US use Instagram to discover new brands and products. Uh, we, all, we knew this was true of the younger um, generation, that this is, the, the, this is the, the generation that has only grown up with social media. But what we're seeing is that it's not just the younger generation um, that is on social media. It's actually um, people of all ages. And um, I think, uh, I don't have it in this particular presentation, but um, there are numerous studies that show on different platforms that um, some of the highest um, adopting groups uh, these days are in the people that are 65 and older. It's also true that B2B sales are forever changed. Um, we're really, see, we see a lot of people um, purchasing things online. Um, we get our groceries online. We're able to get things um, from Amazon, wherever you are. But what about B2B sales? So McKinsey found that 70% to 80% of B2B decision makers prefer remote act interactions or digital self-service. Um, it's easier to schedule. You don't have to travel. Um, and particularly in COVID, you didn't have to, to be near people that could infect you. Um, 705 of those buyers stated they are willing to independently purchase new items online in excess of $50,000. And 27% of those buyers were comfortable purchasing it in excess of half a million dollars. That's really significant. Um, there was a general thinking that uh, if you, it was a very large purchase, there's no way that you would want to do it online. Um, but that's not necessarily true, as you can see. 90% of B2B decision makers expect remote and digital model to stick around in the long run. If you think about your own personal buying habits um, and what you would be willing to do in person, what you would be willing to do offline, it probably weighs in. And uh, when you think about like, how do you make purchases, more and more people would prefer to just do a bunch of research, get the information up front, and then perhaps have a conversation. And so um, really a lot of the things that you need to be thinking about in not just your social strategy, but in your marketing strategy is how do I provide as much information and how do I educate my possible buyers long before um, I end up actually having a conversation? This is an opportunity um, because those customers are expecting online engagement and they want real um, connections and conversations. Um, this is a great opportunity for you to think, how do I, how do I make that shift? How do I bring new ideas into my social and marketing mix? Um, sales are not the same kind of priority that they were. They want information. 
They want um, it to be engaged with other individuals and they care about social issues when it comes to purchasing in a way that they have not in the past. And so you need to build relationships with your customers. So there's four key social media trends. Um, first is socially conscious audiences. I'm gonna go through all of these too. Um, companies have to engage more on topics like mental health, um, inclusivity and social justice. Um, snackable content, short form, form video content is here to stay. Um, live video, we were already seeing a big uptick in live streaming before the pandemic and that just took it to a new level. And authenticity, there's a global erosion in trust and a renewed desire for privacy, which means human touch is more important than ever before. So let's start with the socially conscious audiences. Um, we have seen a global um, rise in uh, individuals caring about what companies think about social issues. 88% of consumers, oh, and I have to warn you that I do have a very vocal kitty who likes to make an appearance on my Zoom calls, I apologize. 88% um, of consumers want to support brands that have social causes aligned with their products and services. And you see this a lot in individuals asking um, people, asking brands to support particular causes, or you're seeing more and more brands realizing that's true. And they're coming out in their social uh, and um, in their marketing efforts with particular messages around socially conscious issues. Um, in order to make this successful, you really need to understand your target audience. You have to know what they really care about. And you have to make some decisions about if that is what you want your business to be aligned with. And in order to make this really work, to make these kinds of social posts, to make these kind of marketing posts really matter, you have to believe in your mission and you have to stand by it. You can't um, go in on this and um, not really truly uh, believe it and embody it with your, with your company and the mission that they stand for. You also need to have a crisis plan ready in the event any sort of controversy arises. And this is true even if you choose not to be mission driven. Um, that's important as you've seen, there's a lot of what we call cancel culture um, where individuals say, hey, I'm not gonna buy from you if I don't agree with you. Um, and if you, or a lot of what we're seeing too is that companies sort of end up getting brought into a controversy with without them meaning to have done so, potentially because they were purchasing on ad networks, for example, that might have been problematic, ad networks that might have shared an ad in a place that was problematic, um, or maybe they just didn't realize that their message um, wasn't as well received as they would have thought. Um, yeah, kitties like to uh, be part of the conversation, but cats make the internet, right? Okay. Short form video is also a big, huge rise. And how many of you have gotten lost on TikTok? I know that whenever I have to go to TikTok or Instagram and um, look at reels, for example, um, I end up thinking, oh, I'm going to go get a short example for whatever thing that I'm doing. And I end up in a half an hour later uh, after watching video after video, that scroll is a real addictive thing. Um, TikTok was the most downloaded app of 2020. Um, 850 million users downloaded it into their phones. And Deloitte found that nearly 40% of Americans spend more than one hour per week watching short form video clips. Um, that's pretty impressive. 40% of Americans. I don't have the UK number, but I imagine that it's actually very similar. It might even be higher because the adoption rate in tick, for TikTok was higher in other parts of the country than it was in, in, than it has been in the U.S. Um, and TikTok isn't just for kids. And so I'm gonna—I don't know if I show up on your screen, but um, on TikTok, you should check out these particular individuals. And I'll—I'm gonna read them out here while my kitty wants to tell you about it too. Um, there's Sage Yuki, um, and he, they have, um, this is a, 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 a UK company that has um, a really cool hashtag called Boss It 2021. And what they did is they offered 5,000 pounds to anybody that could, um, that created a TikTok that showed people their home office. 
and it has 8.2 billion views. And I have a cat that really wants me to pay attention to it. So he's gonna be part of things for a brief moment. Um, and so Adobe and Microsoft 365 are also really great companies to check out for their B2B TikToks. Um, and bird's eye view um, is another really great one. You should also check out the hashtags manufacturing, solar energy, and tile installation. You would never imagine that these would be topics that people would care about on TikTok, but a lot of them have hundreds of thousands of views. So short form video is something that you need to be thinking about for your social media strategy in a way that you wouldn't have in the past. This is Merlin, by the way. He's a rag doll and he's very needy. Um, Okay, well, let's see, live video. Um, looks like my um, presentation got a little screwed up there, um, but I'll make the best of it. The video live streaming industry increased 99% in 2020. Of course, this is all pandemic related. People really want to make sure that um, they are um, staying in touch with what's going on in the world and with their friends and their family. And of course, businesses are using live streaming far more than ever before. 80% of consumers prefer live videos to blog posts. This is a really interesting statistic. Um, basically people aren't reading as much anymore, which the author in me is very, very, very sad about. Um, but um, it's great for marketers um, because you can create all sorts of um, really short live, you know, live events that engage your customers directly. You need to make sure your videos are high quality and they have good sound. Um, that's something that people care a great deal about and they're likely to drop off very quickly if you don't have either of those things. And here's, here's my um, advice that I say, make sure that you um, take it. Um, and even if I don't always manage it, start on time. Um, I didn't make it this morning and I, again, I apologize, but online videos with a startup time greater than two seconds have significantly higher streaming video abandonment rates with each individual additional second resulting in 6% more viewers bouncing. Um, and so um, you want your speakers to show up on time, but you also want to make sure that um, in general that you don't, you don't wait too long for individuals to show up in a live stream. You really want to get started as quickly as possible on time. I would say give maybe two minutes to three minutes um, at best to let people join. Um, and if they join late, that's okay. Just make sure you have all the controls set so that people are muted. Um, but make sure that at least you get going on time, that you open up that live stream right on time. Next is authenticity. So a study conducted by Edelman Trust Barometer shows that 57% of online users believe that the media is contaminated with untrustworthy information. Of course, this happened um, a lot because of um, politics in the last few years. Uh, we see this very particularly in the US, but um, that definitely influenced a lot of global um, media trust. 65% um, of social media users are familiar with the Cambridge Analytica data breach. And as a result of that, 37% of people are using Facebook less and less. I know personally, my friends that are on Facebook, they might still be on Facebook, but they're not paying attention and they're not, um, they're not as engaged as they used to be because they just don't trust the platform. Um, what this means for you is that you need to really take a hard look at all of your marketing and your social media and find a way to really be honest and real in your communications. You need to find ways to engage with your customers directly. Um, people don't want to buy from a company logo. They want to buy from other people. This is why it's often really good in your social media if you're doing customer service to sign off with the initials of the people that are talking to you. Um, this is why bots don't always um, work well because people don't really want to talk to bots. They don't want to talk on the phone. They want to have an actual conversation. So although talking on the phone is a is an actual conversation. And unfortunately, um, maybe we've swerved a little too far away from that now, but that's a personal opinion. Okay, but authenticity is very important. So let's talk about how you can manage and monitor um, your social media with HubSpot. Um, our tools are sometimes not always um, forefront 
in, when it comes to social media, but they are very, very powerful. And I say this as somebody who is um, essentially running my own small business. As an author, I am responsible for a lot of my own marketing, even though I've been traditionally published. And so um, using HubSpot to be able to do that has been a huge boon for me. And I'm going to talk about how some of the social media tools um, have been really useful. And you, so you will see some of the examples from my own personal account because I use the platform myself. And so if you're not familiar with inbound, uh, this is really one of the best ways to do business. Um, and the cool thing about it is that HubSpot allows you to do inbound really well. You can schedule and publish your content. You can monitor your social media feeds. You can keep an eye on your competition and you can connect all of your social campaigns into social media efforts into broad campaigns. Um, so you can connect your social media, your blog posts, your landing pages, your email newsletters, all into a campaign and be able to track the results across those campaigns, which is pretty cool in my opinion. So there's three things to keep in mind as you're building your HubSpot social media strategy. First of all, you really need to know your buyer persona. And we talk about the buyer persona all the time at HubSpot, but it's really like, who is your ideal buyer? And, um, and what, what do they look like? How do they purchase? How do they think about the world? Um, if you're unfamiliar with how, what a, a buyer persona is, or how do you even know how to, uh, to create a buyer persona, HubSpot's got this really cool tool called um, a buyer persona creator. And you put in all sorts of criteria for about your products and, and who you think your customer is, and it helps you shape that. If you just do a Google search for HubSpot um, buyer persona um, tool, you should be able to find that easily. Um, next, you should make sure that you understand how your business goals and your objectives are going to align with your social media strategy. You really need to keep those in mind. You should not have a social media strategy that differs from what you want your business and goals and objectives to reach. Um, and you also need tie-in campaigns. So um, or you don't need them, but they are, they're advisable. Tie in all your campaigns together to make a bigger impact. Um, this is also really good if you're a social media manager or you know, a marketing manager that has to report upward, being able to report all of your efforts in one place is a very powerful thing. So we're gonna start with monitoring. And so on the monitoring screen, this is where you can review all your conversations your interactions and your new followers. You can also interact with your audience from this page. And so you can see here, I can tell that somebody retweeted um, my Twitter feed here. Um, I've got somebody who's liked one of my LinkedIn um, likes. And I can see here all of the different conversations and the interactions and my new followers. Um, and you can create streams, which I'm gonna go over in a minute. Um, but what's really great about this is that I can see all sorts of cool information about my the people who are interacting with me. Um, and so this is a uh, this ha this happens to be a colleague in the novel world that I'm in, um, Stephanie Story. She writes books about Leonardo and Michelangelo and Raphael, and um, I can see how often she has interacted with me. I can see um, what information about our Twitter prof profile. Oops really easily. Oops, I skipped ahead. There we go. And um, I can see all of the conversations that we have on the site and how often, and you can see that they go back and there's actually a pretty good history of the conversations that I've had um, with Stephanie. So it's really cool to be able to click through into your followers. Um, and if you are if you have them, if it's a HubSpot customer and they're in your um, in the HubSpot profile um, and they are able to map to the email address in Twitter, then you might be able to see some additional contact information based upon um, what they have done in HubSpot. So like if Stephanie had downloaded a digital cookbook that I have on my website or if um they're filled out a form, for example, you might be able to see this information in the interactions. Twitter streams are super powerful. They allow you to create a, a predefined saved search on specific criteria. So you create the streams, um, you create the, the Twitter um, um, list on um, 
on Twitter, but you can pull it in here into a stream. And then you can also create streams that might be very specific to your HubSpot customers. As you can see here on the right, on the left side, I have um, some for topics that I care about. My first book is about ancient Rome. So I just have a Twitter stream here. So anytime somebody's talking on the hashtag ancient Rome, I can see it. I also have anyone that mentions HubSpot Academy so that I can go in and, and see what kinds of conversations are happening and talk to people that are talking about my courses, for example. I can also see if my blog subscribers are tweeting um, and then interact with them. So I can interact more directly with my customers. Um, there are also competitor streams, which are in beta right now, but um, will be released um, over the coming months. Um, and these allow you to actually look at your competitors and see what kinds of things they are tweeting and what kinds of things they're talking about. You will, the monitoring tends to be primarily in, um, uh, you'll, you'll get a lot of heavy Twitter, uh, 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 Twitter tweets that you can monitor, but it will also monitor LinkedIn and um, Instagram. And um, I don't think Facebook is, wait on the monitoring because it's so closed, but you can um, manage these, um, at least Twitter and LinkedIn for sure, um, but um, Instagram as well. And you can also create streams. Like as I mentioned here, you can see here, I can create a stream of my HubSpot contacts, and this will allow me to um, see what's going on with my customers. And these are all, um, and we work very closely to make sure that we're following all the protocols with the various APIs with the social networks. So as long as they are following the right kinds of privacy guidelines, um, HubSpot is, um, is in line with those as well. Um, streams help you to listen better. You can monitor your prospects, you can monitor press or shareholders, you can monitor your employees. Um, and um, it, this helps you find great ways to engage. If you have an employee, for example, that's, that's been really championing the organization, you can see what's, what's happening with your employees and boost those posts, for example, in your social channels. So let's talk about publishing. So on the publishing side of things, you can easily create new social posts um, by just clicking on an orange button or there's a really cool bookmarklet that you can add to Chrome and Safari. Um, and um, I'm not sure about the other um, web browsers, but at least it may, actually, you know what? I think it might only be a Chrome extension. So let's backtrack and pretend I never mentioned Safari, but um, it, there is a Chrome bookmarklet that allows you to, as you're browsing, if you see an article that you want to share or a web page that you want to share, you can just click that and you can create a social post. This same type of block will pop up and it allows you to choose the network you can get started on. And you can see here is some of the recent posts that I had. This is a particular fireside chat that I was promoting um, last week on Clubhouse. Um, I can see, I can schedule posts. I can also save posts as drafts. And um, you can tie everything together with campaigns, as I was mentioning, and it will allow you to see all of your data together. Um, you can see here's um, a, uh, a blog, a, a, a Facebook post that I had posted. And down here, you can see campaign. Um, last fall, I had a, a book sale on um, uh, BookBub, which is a site that allows, that does discount books. And so I had a campaign all around this particular book sale and um, was able to um, look at all of the information at the same time. So on this particular post, um, I had 15 clicks, um, 664 impressions, six shares, not as high as I might've liked, but this is um, just one of many posts that happened in this particular campaign. Um, scheduling is also something that is super easy to do. You can schedule posts all across um, your um, social accounts. So you can see here, I created a Twitter post. And then what I can do is I can essentially clone this post and, onto one of these other social channels. And this was a particular campaign for a cookbook for my ancient Rome novel. And um, this links to a blog post um, that's in HubSpot. Um, and so it's really easy just to have everything all in one place. You can also preview your posts so you know what they're going to look like on the network. 
Um, it's easy to set up a social schedule. Um, and then this is what my schedule looks like, but I tweet and um, share information very regularly. Um, this is, um, these are, you basically set up a general schedule for all of your campaigns uh, or for all of your social posts. And then when you're in the scheduler on the actual individual post, you can choose one of the times. And then one thing that's really cool too is that you can um, do this thing called publish like a human, which allows your publishing to not necessarily be exactly at those times, but to be one or two minutes off so that it looks like you're publishing like a real person would, not on a, pres a prescriptive schedule. One thing about social scheduling though, is that if things go wrong in the world, or if your company is having challenges, or there's just a lot of reasons to pay attention to your schedule, you'll want to go into your individual posts on the, on the um, previous pages that I was showing and, and either pause those or um, reschedule them to a time that might be a little bit better. Um, HubSpot pauses um, its social media regularly when there is um, maybe unrest in the world or something that is um, we believe that deserves more attention than the marketing that we're doing. Um, you can also exercise your options. As I mentioned, publish like a human. You can choose um, to delay, um, to, to just automatically add things to the next available time slot. You can create, you can add your Bitly account to it so it'll publish with short links and then you can install the Chrome extension. You can also publish all your posts now by default instead of having a schedule if you desire. You can um, use the drag and drop on your calendar. So for example, you can see I haven't been posting much on the weekend. If I wanted to, I could actually take, oops, I could take one of these and, and drag it to a weekend and it would publish it on a weekend. So it's really nice to be able to kind of spread out the things that you're, you're posting. And then of course the reporting. So on the um, manage page in social, you can see here easily how many clicks that you've had. My cats are very popular as you can see. This is um, the remote weekend, the remote week that we did when um, the week before COVID hit, um, ironically. Um, and uh, people are excited to learn about um, working from home. This might've been two weeks, a couple weeks before it all really hit in the US at least. Um, and that was a very popular post. Um, I can see how many clicks I had. I can see how many interactions I've had. Um, and I can see that for all sorts of channels. I can see this for all for Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, and um, uh, Instagram. And then I can also see if I, I can choose a campaign if I wanted. I can um, choose specific dates. Um, and I can rearrange these um, as well. So I can see what happened before, you know, uh, you know, I can see in a, the time descending or ascending um, and, and organized by um, interactions and clicks. I can also, um, in general, on this page, I can also schedule in bulk and export posts, um, not part of the reporting, but I also wanna mention that those, those, this is something else you can do on this page. Um, you can view your reports in the um, analyze section too. You can see like how big your audience is and how much it's growing. You can see what your published posts are doing. Um, last year, I barely published much because there was this global pandemic. Um, and then oops, you can see how many interactions and clicks. And then we also pull in YouTube too. So if you can, um, if you have a YouTube channel, you can see all of your YouTube stats in one place in a way that I think is a lot cleaner sometimes than what YouTube offers. And so this is an example of my really um, paltry um, YouTube viewing, but you can see how, how the charts look really cool. Um, these are really great things that you can um, snip um, for presentations um, for your executives, for example. Um, you can also see what your top posts were um, and how many clicks and interactions that you had on certain posts. Um, and you can filter, filter by a variety of criteria. And this will allow you to decide if you, if what your top posts are, you might wanna boost a post, you might want to add additional um, or similar posts, or um, you might want to repost those at different times. So that's, essentially what I would have shown you this morning if I had arrived on time. Um, but 
In the meantime, you can get certified in social media. You can check out the full course here um, and um, feel free to tweet on the HubSpot social cert. If you've, once you've gotten your certification, um, you can tweet at HubSpot Academy. I'm realizing I don't have my social channels here, um, but I will actually take you to Twitter quickly so you can see um, my um, Twitter handle. I'm at Crystalin. If you want to give me a tweet, you can do that. I'm also um, clking at hubspotcademy.com. Oh, excuse me, clking at hubspot.com. And um, of course, you can get a hold of your hug leaders and they can direct you and any questions that you might have for me as well. And so I'd be delighted to answer any questions that you might have. Um, and uh, hopefully I can um, have another hug with you in the future that's actually a little bit more interactive and that um, potentially could be in person. So I would love to come to London and see all of you. I hope you have a great um, day today and um, that your social uh, media is, um, is going to be a little bit richer for this. Thanks. <laughs>